Hey, what's up guys? My name is Daniel Lopez with Invest in You Finance and today we're going to be talking about how to get rid of debt if you have a 401k and you have no idea what you are investing in within that 401k. So I want to talk about this hypothetical person, Sally, and she's $10,000 in debt on credit cards and she has a 25% annual percentage interest rate. So she's concerned about her debt and how it, it can continue to get worse if she continues spending the way she does. However, she doesn't know what to do. She's in debt. Um, She's just lost. And Sally remembers, hey, I've been watching these YouTube videos about this crazy guy talking about how to get rid of debt. What if I apply what he's saying just to figure out on my own what the calculations will be? And then I can ultimately make a decision whether I want to do something or not. So, Sally gets a pen and gets a piece of paper, looks up a compound interest calculator online and starts crunching the numbers. She figures out that if she continues to make a minimum payment on her credit card every year for five years, she's gonna have more debt, more debt, more debt. Year one, she's gonna have $12,500. Year two, $15,000. $600. Year three, $19,000 in debt. Year four, $24,000 in debt. Year five, $30,000 in debt. Because she's not paying off her credit card in full every month. She's overspending and she's only paying the minimum payment. So she's, you know, getting stressed out. She wants to get out of this debt. And she remembers that she heard someone say, hey, you could take a 401k loan out. But she's skeptical because she also hears, oh, if you take a 401k loan out, your retirement is, you know, it's not gonna grow and blah, blah, blah. So she's, you know, she's confused and she has mixed emotions about it. But she knows that if she gets a piece of pen and paper and looks up a calculator, she can calculate it and figure it out and see if it's gonna work out for her or not. So currently her situation is she has a 50K salary. Her 401k right now has $11,000 sitting in her 401k that she's put in herself. She's contributing 5% of her paycheck to her 401k. 5% of 50K, that's $2,500 yearly. So divide that by 12, you get $208 per month. But also, Sally does not know what her annual rate of return is. When Sally was hired at her corporate job or wherever she was hired, she remembers that they were saying, hey, it's time to sign up for your yearly benefits. If you don't choose an investment, we'll automatically choose one for you. So Sally says, oh man, I don't even know what I'm investing inside of my 401k. But she saw a video online that shows you how to choose your funds inside your 401k. So she goes into her 401k, starts digging, and looks at her investment options. Her investment options show that the company signed her up for a moderate fund. The moderate fund receives anywhere from like a three to 5% annual rate of return. So currently she's contributing 5%, which is $208 every month, and she has an annual rate of return of 5%. She calculates that out and she realizes, okay, if I continue with this for the next five years, year one, I'll have 14,000, 
Year two, I'll have 17,361. Year three, 20,000. Year four, 24,000. Year five, 28,000. So if she has $28,000, she still has the $30,000 of debt, right? So she's like, okay, well, at least I know this is where I'll be at in five years. Currently, with my investment options that I have inside my 401k. But then she realizes while looking at in her investments inside her 401k, she sees all the other funds and she sees all the other performance of the funds. And she's like realizing this is what it means when every year they say, hey, it's time to enroll in your benefits. At the same time, it's time to enroll in your health benefits and you can decide on whether you wanna get an HSA, health savings account or not. But also, you can change your contribution anytime you want and you can also change your investment option anytime that you want inside your 401k. So Sally's like, oh my God, like this is what I should have been doing. Like I should have been concentrating on what investments I was investing in. She's like, I'm looking at these funds and some of them have a better performance than the fund that uh, I'm automatically enrolled in. So she sees a fund which is mimicking the market and that fund is yielding a seven to 10% annual rate of return. So, you know, she's starting to think and, and realize like, well, automatically I need to change what my fund that I'm investing in is. So no matter what, I'm gonna change that because a 5% rate of return, that's good, but I want a better rate of return. So ultimately she decides to change that regardless. And she's getting excited because she's like, okay, this is what I need to be learning. Um, she wants to get into investing and you know, she's, she's, hearing people say, oh, invest in a Roth IRA and all this other stuff out there on the internet. But little does she know that she's already investing. Everyone out there who has a 401k, they're already investing. So before they go out and start trying to invest on the side, they should be looking into their 401k, looking into their own retirement account and knowing every single fund that's inside their account. So that way they can maximize their retirement and when it grows it can compound and whenever you retire you can have enough money so Sally's realizing like okay like I need to know all the funds in my account before I start investing externally so I can build a foundation learn about investing and take the next steps that I need so that way I can get out of debt so she's thinking, oh, look, it says inside my 401k, take a 401k loan. Calculate how much your payment will be. So she starts thinking, okay, I remember seeing this crazy video of this guy talking about taking a 401k loan and using it to buy a house. Well, could I use the 401k loan to pay off debt? And the answer is, you can use a 401k loan to do whatever you want with it. However, if you're gonna take a loan out, you're gonna wanna use it for something that's gonna benefit you. You're either gonna wanna take it out to you know, 10X it, which I don't know how you can 10X it, or you want to take it out to cut down on debt so you don't crawl into a ditch that you can't dig yourself out of, or you're gonna wanna use it to start a business, whatever. I mean, whatever you want to use it for, it's just an option out there. So she's realizing that, okay, I could take a 401k loan out. I have $11,000 inside my account. So I only need $10,000 and I could pull out $10,000 and pay off my debt. So she's like, oh wait, this sounds too good to be true. What did I listen to this person say on the videos? Oh, yeah, 
make my own calculations. Okay, yeah, so why don't I grab a pen and make calculations to see if in reality it's worth it or not? Yes, she's excited. She's like, I'm gonna do this. Okay, gets the pen, gets the paper, looks up the compound interest calculator, plugs in the numbers. And what does she find out? Okay, the 401k loan is a loan that you pay back to yourself in your account. Her 401k loan is gonna charge her 6%, but she's gonna be paying that 6% back to herself because she's borrowing her own money. And she can take a 401k loan. She chooses the terms. She is gonna choose five years because that will give her enough room to breathe on her paycheck. Because when you take out a 401k loan, they pull the money out of your paycheck, which means that your paycheck's gonna be less. So you need to budget and figure out where you're gonna get this extra money from. If you're tapped out and she's tapped out and she's using her credit card to pay for everything because she's you know, paying on her credit card because she has no more money from her check, then she has to go back, audit her expenses and look, okay, how am I gonna free up the extra money that I'm gonna have to pay back to myself? So she runs the calculation of how much it's gonna cost her to pay that 401k loan back to herself. And it says, okay, for a 401k loan for $10,000 at five years at a 6% interest rate, you're going to pay $193 per month. And we're gonna pull that out of your paycheck this is what your estimated new paycheck amount is going to be. So she thinks about it and she's like, well, okay, if I stop eating out less or if I start using, you know, coupons or just starts think if I cancel Netflix, whatever, she figures out that she can do some things to tweak her budget and that'll allow her to free up $193. But Sally's also going to get a raise. The ne this, this next coming year. So she knows that she's gonna have extra money. And she's excited about that raise because ultimately it's gonna help her pay back this loan. Regardless, she's going to free up any money in her budget to pay off this loan. So when her paycheck is less, it won't feel like, you know, she's not able to breathe. So $193 a month, if she takes this out, ah, she's gonna have a thousand dollar balance in her 401k. She starts thinking about all oh, the people on the internet that were saying, if I pull out of my 401k, I'm not gonna have any money by the time I retire. Okay, well, guess what? Sally did the calculations. She wrote them down and she realized that if she took the 401k loan for $10,000, apply that to her credit card debt, she wipes out this $30,000 that hypothetically could have happened if she didn't take the proper steps to get rid of it, to get rid of this 10K debt. So this situation is over and she's looking at what her new situation could potentially be if she decides to, to do this. So. She's still gonna contribute the 5% to her account, which is 800, sorry, $208. So she's gonna pay $208, plus she's going to also pay back the $193. So 208 plus 193, you get, every month she's gonna be putting in $401 to her retirement account. And she's excited because she just changed her investments inside of her 401k to a better investment, which now is going to be giving her a 10% rate of return every year. But it follows the market and she knows the consequences of choosing the fund. One year it'll be up, one year it'll be down, one year it'll be up. It'll just follow the market, but on average, She's been hearing that the S&P 500 normally gives about a seven to 10%. So she knows that in the long term, she can't touch this money anyways because she's 
not near retirement. So she knows that compound interest is eventually gonna kick in and start helping her investments grow. So she runs the calculations and she sees, okay, from $1,000 the following year, because I'm putting $401 every month into my account and I'm getting a 10% ROI, she's gonna have $6,132. So she's like, okay, yeah, my 401k is still down, but you know, I'm starting to kind of see something happening here. Then the next year she has $11,778. The following year she has $17,988. The fourth year she has $24,820. And then on the fifth year she has $32,000, 300 and 34 and she's debt free because when they deposit that ten thousand dollars into her account from her 401k she wiped off her credit card debt paid it off and didn't have any more debt she took control of her actions she took control of her spending because she did not want to get into debt of $30,000. And she realized that, hey, I need to take charge of my life and I need to be, you know, financially educated. And ultimately, you can listen to everyone in the world, but unless you get a pen and paper and a calculator and write things down, you're never gonna know what to do or what, what your options are. So she sees that she's out of debt. She now currently has $32,000 in her 401k and she's happier than ever because she learned how to invest in her 401k and she learned that by budgeting and figuring out a way to free up the extra money that she needs to pay this loan off, she's paying it to herself. That in this situation, it worked out because she calculated it and she just decided to take control. So Sally's super excited because while she was at this step right here, she was like, whoa, what if I take it a step further? What if I continue to go for 30 years? How much am I gonna have? She's like, but, in this new calculation, I'm no longer contributing the 401 because the five years are done. I paid off the loan to myself. So I'm back to only contributing $208 per month. But she knows compound interest is amazing and it does amazing things. And with time, compound interest builds and builds and builds and grows your investments. So after 30 years, calculates that she has $1 million in her account. So she listened to people on the internet, but she decided to do her own calculations to see what worked for her best. And this is what she came up with. So this is just a hypothetical situation. This is just like made up. And I just want you guys to see that you can listen to people online and all that stuff. But in reality, you need to put in the work. You need to figure out the calculations. And first thing, if you want to start getting into investing, if you have a 401k, look into your 401k. Just be like, let me look into my 401k. Log in, see what you got. Look at the investments. Look at what funds that you can choose inside of your 401k to invest in. And maybe, maybe you're okay with the moderate fund that your company automatically chooses for you when you are enrolled in your benefits, when you first start with your company. But maybe you're you know, 22 years old right out of college and you're like, hey, I'm young. I wanna you know, invest in the risky fund because I know that I'm young, I could take more risk. Ultimately, it's whatever you want to decide and 
you get to choose. But you're gonna feel so much better when you know that you made the decision based on doing your homework, based on doing research, based on Googling things online and getting free information out there. And you calculated using calculators online. What Sally also remembered because she was like, oh, this 401k loan, this is too good to be true. Well, there's risks in 401k loans. And the risks are if you lose your job or you quit, you have to pay that 401k loan back to yourself within 60 days. So hypothetically speaking, if Sally was doing this and then she's like all gun ho her credit card debt is gone, so she doesn't have to worry about that. All she has to worry about is paying that credit card back, that credit card debt back to herself, to her 401k. So let's just say that halfway in the year, Sally got laid off. So if her salary is 50K, she, that means half in the, in the middle of the year, she's only made $25,000. So half of 50,000, that's $25,000. She, she can't pay the 401k loan back in full. So she looks up, okay, what's the penalty if I don't pay back the 401k loan? Well, remember, whenever you contribute to a 401k, the money you contribute is not taxed. So it reduces your taxable income. Now, if you can't pay your 401k loan back, that money is added as if it were income, plus you're gonna owe a 10% early withdrawal penalty. So if she made $25,000 in the middle of the year, she can't pay the $10,000 back to herself. At the end of the year, the 401k will send her a form. That form says she pulled out $10,000. The IRS will get you for a 10% for a 10 early withdrawal penalty. And, you know, real quick, instead of making her salary of, you know, $50,000, she quit half the year or she got laid off half the year, she made $25,000. They added the $10,000 on top of her income. So 10 plus 25, 35 so her income for the year if she didn't get a job for the rest of the other half of the year is now $35,000 so she has to pay taxes on the income of $35,000 in addition to that she pays a 10% penalty um, when it's when she, it's time to do her taxes so depending on if she was gonna get a refund or not get a refund the amount of money you're, you owe is gonna be at um, that time. So that is just a risk of taking a 401k loan. So is it, is it bad, is it good? Like everything, it depends on you. Do you want to, you can calculate how much you're gonna have to pay and then realize, oh, well, if I lose my job, then if all else fails, this is how much I'm gonna owe. So this is what it looks like when you're trying to, to learn financial education, when you wanna become financially independent. These are the calculations that you're gonna wanna be playing with and, you know, just doing the exercise, you can learn a lot. Doing an, an expense budget audit to yourself will automatically show you what all your expenses are, and then you can be like, oh, I can cut down here, I can cut down here. I mean, there are so many ways that Sally could pay off this debt. This is just one example of how you could, if you wanted to, do it. So, Anyways, guys, I appreciate you guys watching and thank you so much. Please like the, <laughs> I got too excited. 
please smash the like button. Please subscribe. I appreciate you guys coming. Thank you. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own research, look up your own information, and ultimately decide what you wanna do because no one is going to look out for your best interest more than yourself. If you learn about money and things like this, it's only gonna help you get better and better and better. You learn about you know Roth 401ks, Roth IRAs, you learn about all this stuff, and then you can decide what do I want to do? What are my goals? So anyways, if you guys are in debt, this is an example of what you can do. Sally needs to figure out how she got into $10,000 in debt because another situation that can happen to Sally is that she does the 401k loan but she keeps spending. So at the end of the loan, sad face, Sally's back in debt. So find out what that root cause is. And just making an assumption, I can say that her spending is more than her income. That's, I mean, that's like, that's the easiest way to figure it out. I mean, that's like a uh, black and white, like, okay, you're in debt because your income is not sufficient. So what can you do to bring up your income? Well, Sally knows that she's gonna get a raise, so she might not have to pull out a 401k. She could just change her investment strategy and change it to 10%, and that'll help out her 401k. She's gonna get a raise, so she could pay this down however she wants. This is just an example, guys. I just wanna show you guys what it looks like. So, so many ways and things to do things. Like, so many ways to skin a cat. That's what people say. Um, so, just think about it. What would you do? Comment below, let me know what you guys think. Am I wrong, am I right? What do you think, am I crazy, am I not crazy? Remember. I've taken two 401k loans out. One was to purchase my primary residence and one was to remodel that primary residence. Both times I got lucky when I pulled out the 401k loan, the market dropped. So when I was paying back the loan, I was buying everything at a discount. And that helped ultimately, if you go watch my video of how much I have inside of my 401k, you'll see that that's probably why I was able to accumulate that much money in my 401k. On top of that, I maxed out my 401k every year that I worked at my corporate job. Anyways, go check out that video. I'm going to try and pull out as many videos as I can, um, as fast as I can. Hopefully, it'll help you guys out. Can't stress how much I'm grateful you guys are watching. Please comment below. Check out my other videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>